As you might expect, there's lots of different kinds of components you can add to your models. You can add furniture, equipment, plumbing fixtures, lighting fixtures, etc. Many of these element types in Revit will actually be placed using a single component button. So if you look at the ribbon, there's a component button here with a keyboard shortcut of CM. And if I click on that and open up the drop-down list, what I have initially available in this file is a rather eclectic list. I have a piece of furniture here, a parking space, a tree, and some railing supports. So it's sort of a mixed bag of elements that are available. But none of those are elements that I actually want to place in this model. What I actually want to place in this model is some equipment in the utility room, some appliances in the kitchen, and some plumbing fixtures in the bathrooms. So I don't have any of those elements currently in the file. So we're going to go right up here to the ribbon and choose load family. Now, when you do, that will display your load family dialog, and it will take you to your default library. So your library might look slightly different than mine. I'm in the Imperial library, so I'm going to back up and choose my metric library. And I'm going to just load in some components here, and you're welcome to choose from whatever you have available on your system. You don't have to choose exactly the same items as me. But I'm going to scroll down to mechanical then architectural, then airside components, and finally furnaces. And I'm going to select this furnace element right here. I'll bring that in by clicking open. And when it first comes in, you'll see this small little rectangle on my cursor. And unlike doors and windows, notice that I'm able to place this furnace anywhere that I like. So this is what I like to refer to as a freestanding family. Now, also unlike doors and windows, with doors and windows, if you tap the space bar, it would flip the door or window, kind of like a mirror. But here, when you tap the space bar, it'll actually rotate the element in 90 degree increments. Now, furthermore, if your mouse happens to be highlighting something that's at an angle before you tap that space bar, it'll actually rotate in 90 degree increments, but those increments will match the orientation of the element under your cursor. So if you want to reset that orientation, just move away from the rotated element and tap the space bar again to kind of reset the orientation. Now, I do want it oriented horizontally like this, and I want to kind of place it down here in the lower corner of my utility room. So let's go right back to load family and load in some additional items. Now I'm going to switch to my metric library again, scroll back down, choose specialty equipment, then I'll choose domestic. And in here, I have several different appliances. Now, you can actually load more than one family at the same time using your control and shift keys. So I'm going to load a dryer, hold down my control key, choose a range, a refrigerator, and a washer. You're welcome to choose additional elements in here as well, if you like. I'll click open. And each of those families will load. And by default, it just put the refrigerator on my type selector first. So we'll go ahead and start with that. Notice that there are three different sizes that came in for the refrigerator. So you want to just verify your size before you place it. And I'll choose the medium size in this case. And the orientation is already what I want. So no need to tap the space bar. And notice that even though this is a freestanding family, you're actually able to get it to line up and snap to other nearby geometry like these nearby walls. So I can get the refrigerator to line up nicely with this wall right here. But if I zoom in slightly, it's probably a little too far away from the wall. So I'll just click that temporary dimension, type in a better distance like 50 millimeters and press enter to complete the placement. Switch to a different family. I'm going to go to the range. I'll choose the larger size range. Tap the space bar a few times to get the orientation what I want. And then again, I can get it to snap right to that wall surface and place it about halfway on that wall. I'll keep going with the washer and dryer. Choose an appropriate size. Tap the space bar to get the correct orientation. Place it relative to that wall and repeat for the washer. Notice that the two elements will also snap to one another. So now I need some plumbing fixtures for the toilet rooms. So I'll just zoom in a little bit here on the toilet rooms, go right back to load family, switch to my metric library, scroll down and find the plumbing folder, architectural, and then fixtures, and then finally water closets. Now here in this folder, I have both a commercial version and a domestic version. So I'll choose the domestic version, and I'm actually going to choose this 3D version because I want to show you that even though I'm loading a 3D family, 
Notice that here in the plan view, it's still using a 2D symbol. Now I'm gonna show you what this looks like in 3D shortly, but let's go ahead and place it first. So I'm gonna tap the space bar and orient one that way, space bar a couple more times, orient one this way here in this space, and that places those two toilets. Now there's plenty more families that we could load, but I wanna show you one more example, and this time I'm gonna load from somewhere other than the default library. So when I click Load Family, you can actually browse to any location on your system, not just these default libraries that are loaded by default. So in this case, I'm gonna to go to Desktop, Exercise Files, and Chapter 4, and I've got this family in here called Bathtub. Now, I downloaded this Bathtub family from the internet. So what you can actually do is go out to the internet to any number of sites that host Revit content, search for the item you're looking for, and then download that RFA file. Once you have an RFA file on your system, you can load it in like any other family. So I'm gonna open this up and it comes in at a rather small size. So I'm just gonna change this to something a little bit more reasonable. Now these are in imperial sizes, but the 60 by 30 size should fit in our available space here. So I'm going to place one in this location here and place a second one in that location right there. So I now have these two bathtubs placed in the toilet rooms and I was able to get those from another source. So I welcome you to try loading in other family files that you might find in other locations. Do a Google search, find families that way, maybe on your office network or any other source where you might locate them. Now let's go back to the toilet for a moment and I mentioned how it was a 2D symbol here in plan view but it's actually a 3D family. So let's take a look at that. In order to see that, you would want to actually view the file in 3D. So if you come over here to your toolbar and click on this small little birdhouse icon, that will load what Revit calls the default 3D view. Now, if you scroll down in your project browser, that will actually add a 3D views branch to the browser, and if you expand it, you'll see that the default 3D view name is curly bracket 3D curly bracket. So I often refer to this just simply as curly bracket 3D, but the official name is the default 3D view. Now you can orbit the 3D model around to get a better look at things by holding down the shift key and dragging with your middle wheel button. And so we can kind of tip it down a little bit and kind of peer into the kitchen there and see the refrigerator and the stove. And if we tip it down far enough here, you can start to see into these toilet rooms and you'll notice that we in fact have a three-dimensional toilet symbol, even though we got a 2D symbol in the plan view. So it's a good idea every so often to just kind of look around in 3D and make sure everything looks the way you expect kind of check my appliances here in the utility room. Everything's looking pretty good. And then I can return to other views to continue working. So every so often, it's not a bad idea to just kind of check other views like 3D views and just make sure everything is looking the way you expect. And if not, you can actually edit things right here in the 3D to make adjustments. So I welcome you to add additional components if you wish. I do have a completed version of the file for you to look at where I've added additional items like shelves and rods in the closets, vanities in the toilet rooms, and a hot water heater in the utility area and counters in the kitchen area. So you're welcome to add those items on your own, or you can just simply use this file.